Hello. Welcome to another episode of Crater Method Oil Painting. Today we're looking at a uh, really scruffy looking haircut peeking out under a polar fleece hat. I've been growing a mullet during the coronavirus pandemic. I call it my plague mullet. Shaving the sides of my head. Because it's a wide mohawk kind of thing. <clears throat> so that's what we're looking at today. The back of my neck. Now, we're looking at a painting that is called, tentatively titled Bedhead, because of the big bed-like figure. Beds are a recurring theme in my paintings. It refers to uh, the ocean of sleep that we swim in every 24 hours or so. in every 24-hour period. You know what I'm saying? Bedhead, I, I name these things, it's just like a dumb name. There's a head and there's a bed. You know, it's just a dumb title. Super obvious. And I often will title paintings because I'm taking pictures of them or photo, you know, video, shooting video. And I need a name for the files so I can you know, remember which which painting is which. So I'll just go, uh, blah, 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 look at it and just go, bedhead. And there's a bed, there's a head, it's bedhead. And then later I'm like, do I like that title? Does Do titles even matter? Who cares? But that's what we're going with for now. I've had a lot of different ideas throughout my painting career, life, um, a lot of different ideas about how to title paintings, like just give them numbers like A03, you know, just A0021, you know, just give them catalog numbers so I can remember. But then of course you go, well, which one's that? You know, it, it doesn't help me. A name actually helps me remember which one is which. Catalog numbers don't cut it. And I was thinking of naming them like Joshua. Let's just call this one Fred. This one is Samantha. And we're seeing this huge penis mushroom appear on the bed. That was something. It came to me. We'll pan out here at some point, I'm sure. Maybe not. I should pan out right around here. Pan out, is that a thing? The right term? Not important. Putting in this uh, shadow there under the penis thing that's kind of flopping over this log. And the pillows, accentuating the cap, the mushroom cap or head and on that face. I don't need to just tell you what I'm doing. You can see if you're watching. I don't. Is anybody watching this? Somebody's watching. If you're listening to this, you're watching this. So there is somebody watching this. Whenever I produce things for YouTube or. Instagram, I always have difficulty imagining that anyone actually watches anything I do. Not because I think it's bad or I actually think it's good. I just don't assume it's, it's a very specialized interest, I guess. The trigger method is. It's very specialized. If you're into this, you're a very special person to me. 
this kind of elephant face starts appearing there. You see that? So I was working on right there. It's like an elephant face peeking out under that pillow. It's just starting to come into view. You can't really, maybe I should do some close-ups. Not really too worried about these uh, time lapse videos. Just got a text here. Checking on the dog. He's doing good. Okay, so there we're, we're closer, and there's that elephant man I was talking about. <clears throat> Elephants have been appearing a lot in my paintings, and when I say appearing, I mean really, you know, they just show up. I don't, I don't think I've never thought. I've, I think about the elephant because it appears in the painting. I don't think of the elephant then put it in the painting. I'll just be working on something, and I'll suddenly see an elephant face, and then I'll go with it. And I've noticed they, they've appeared in many, many paintings. What does the elephant represent? Like if, if I'm looking at this painting like a dream, which is often how they appear to me. How do you interpret the elephant? Well, there's the obvious phallus thing, which is I have a lot of genitals in my paintings, generally speaking. There's the phallic trunk. Elephants are big, they're slow, they have a long memory, that's the idea, one characteristic of them. Did I say they're slow? I said they're big. They're not necessarily slow. They could be completely dangerous. They're, you know, you think of the god Ganesh, the Hindu god. I don't know, maybe I'll do some research on that, what the elephant means. There's the logo Traeger method, oil painting, that's me. Seems completely dorky, right, being this visionary shaman painter. To have a Traeger method, oil painting, it's very cheesy. My dad was really into that, my dad is deceased. He, uh, he was very into that, he had a sort of little going watercolor painting practice and and he called it Traeger art. Not something that cool fine artists do, you know, but I'm I'm into it too, even though I'm a cool fine artist. Maybe we do do that. Not that I'm cool. I mean I'm I'm not cool. I'm not thought of as cool outside of my own perception. I I'm, I'm not saying I'm a cool artist like in any public estimation. I don't think there's any public estimation of me. I'm not, I don't really exist in the public at this point as an artist. But uh, I know I'm a cool fine artist, inwardly. And I think it's cool to have Traeger Method be my brand. It's important stuff we're talking about, huh? There's a pandemic ravaging the world. The economy of the planet is tanking. Another 600 million people appear to be heading towards dire poverty. And I'm talking about how it's cool that I brand my art Traeger method. But isn't that just the way we live? It's important, I think, these little things. It's a big thing to me. That face just changed a lot. You see how I'm exploring? Give her a big dragon nose at one point, then it's back to a normal no nose. This is one of those faces that I always think of as a woman. I'm not sure how you define gender in a painted image. 
going back out. There's always glare on these things. I can't get that quite right, but uh, I'm doing these, um, uh, what do you call it? Narrations. One take. I watch the video. I talk. I'm not doing any, you know, editing, cutting back in, going, oh, it could be better. I'm just talking stream of consciousness about what I'm watching and whatever comes to mind. And I take comfort in knowing that no one is forced to watch this or listen to it. So, you know, no apologies because, hey, who cares? You like my sparkly beret now? This is obviously a different painting session than the earlier one, unless I switched hats. No, this is, this is different. <clears throat> I'm always into painting faces. I love painting hands. Working on some faces over there. Painting looks very busy to me, unresolved. Doesn't bum me out though, because what I say to myself when I look at a painting and it feels jumbled and you don't really have the uh, space defined very well, when it's like that and it's frustrating to look at for me, I just tell myself, hey, it's not done, it's not finished. Never a reason to be depressed or bummed out about something you're working on. Just say, hey, it's not great yet because it's not done. You just keep working. It's almost like painting the way I paint. It's like uh, this like focusing a lens you know you just kind of sharpen and tighten and brighten and push and pull and you know until you get something that is dynamic that pops quote unquote Let the brush just fly around the painting. Put the colors all throughout the thing. Don't worry about clean colors. Make them dirty. Mix them up. The brightest, most pure colors are the last ones you add, really. Seriously. Now we switched over to um, headphone. I mean, a uh, head-mounted phone. Got my iPad there on a stand. I love having the iPad there. I'll just have shows going. Love watching biographies. I love watching all kinds of things. I also use it as an image library if I want to look at a reference. I don't look at very many reference photos, but occasionally I, I'll look at something, you know, I'll think, what does a pineapple look like? I want to paint a pineapple. Not that I ever have. I, I mean, I've painted. I'm just pulling that out of my hat. Um, look at this chicken wing thing on the side of that obelisk. There's the palette. Um, what was I saying? I was saying... that I don't look at a ton of um, reference photos. But occasionally, it's good to use one. And you think, well, what does a basket weave look like? Well, let's look at a basket. Let's look at a few basket photos. Got the internet, some million, billion photos of anything you can think of. I like working particularly with photos that I've taken myself, if, if possible. I take a ton of photos of plants in my neighborhood, in my environment. Hardly ever look at them as reference, references, but 
I love looking at them. I love thinking about them and almost memorizing plant structures. You know, like how does this, how do these leaves arrange themselves on the branch? You know, what is the order of them? It's springtime right now, middle of April. There's a shot of it kind of where it is right now. That's the, I think it's pretty busy looking, but a lot of my, most of my paintings are really busy, crazy jumbles. Um, but yeah, it's spring, so I've been really obsessed with looking at buds and blossoms, you know, that, that unfurling kind of leaf structures, flowers opening, little capsules opening up, cracking open. It's like my favorite plant form, flowers. I love seeing flowers kind of when they're still in like a packet form and they're about to open like an iris before it unfurls. It's like this little information package, a little tiny cigar ready to just unfurl and open up. I love that. It's just something about the energy in in that and they're so fairy like in their forms i think of the world fairy is a the term fairy like f a e r i e fairy the fae the realm of the fairies um i think of fairy as you know the japanese term wabi sabi it's like a aesthetic quality like something's beautiful but like a, 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 a ceramic cup is beautiful but if it has a little crack in it it's even more beautiful a little imperfection a little rough edge to it that's wabi-sabi it's it's you know there's that built-in flaw that makes it more beautiful it's like heartbreakingly beautiful because of the flaw um i love that term because it describes a subtle thing that you understand if it's explained. And I feel like fairy is the same way for me. Like I'll see something and I go, oh, that's so fairy. That's so fairy. And it's not necessarily the things you, you'd imagine, like a flower blossoming, you know, that with little curly cues and tendrils coming down around it or something that's obviously very fairy looking in the traditional sense of the word. You could picture a fairy sitting on the branch or near the flower or whatever. I'm talking like, it could be a weird, you know, old car that just looks mysterious. You know, it could be just a piece of garbage on the street could look fairy-ish to me. You know, the work of David Lynch is very fairy-like to me. In my understanding. I like to think that all my paintings are fairy-like. 